physios Sarah and Sam Sim joining us today. So some tips on how to um, set up a healthy home office, which is really appropriate because that's exactly where I am. So I'm, I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say. Sarah, Sarah and Sam have about 20 years of experience dealing with musculoskeletal issues um, and human movement and exercise. So they're really well positioned to give this talk. We'll be recording this for everyone. So we will send a follow out email with some, um, some tips that will get sent out to everyone here today. Um, if anyone has any questions though, at any point in the webinar, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a little Q and A function. If you guys can jump in and throw any questions out just for Sarah and um, from Sam to answer, I'll be able to get those at either at the end of the webinar or halfway through wherever appropriate. So with that said, guys, um, I'm going to, we've got a poll, I think that you guys wanted to share with everyone as well. Um, so for everyone at home and for hopefully the last people coming on board, that should have come up on your screens now. Um, got three questions, just yes and no's. Are you working from home for the first time? Which is really important to see kind of what our, our crowd um, has, if they have a good setup or not. Are you experiencing any pain? Getting quite a few responses already, which is great, great to see. And do you have a standing desk? I do not. I do it in the office, which I should have uh, stolen home. I don't know if you guys have done that with any of your own stuff. But we're getting quite a few responses here, which is really good to see. Sarah or Sam, do you guys have a standing desk in your own home? No. Not at home. <laughs> no. But to be fair, Carlo, we work most of the time standing, so. <laughs> That's true. That is, that is a good point. So any sitting time is a good time. <laughs> we'll give this just another minute um, and then we can share the results with everyone. It's actually really interesting. We've had, I'm going to stop this here so we can get moving and, and share the results with, with everyone at home as well. We had 67% of people saying, no, this isn't the first time that I've been working from home, which hopefully is a great sign to say that everyone's got a really good setup. Um, but unfortunately it doesn't necessarily correlate to experiencing pain. So um, we've got a, an interesting group of, of people listening. And hopefully everyone's really excited to hear you guys talk. So with that said, I'm going to hide away and let you guys take over. Thank you, Carlo. Thanks, Carlo. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Sam. And my name is Sarah. <laughs> we are both physiotherapists from Kiza in Melbourne. Um, obviously, this current world crisis has forced many people to stop working at their offices and begin working from home or studying from home. Um, some of you might be used to this, but for others, this might be the first time, as we saw in the poll, 37% of you, I think it was, the first time. Um, and we've certainly found that over the last few weeks, more and more of our clients have been presenting with neck pain, shoulder pain, lower back pain, and even headaches, um, which seem to be predominantly due to poor postures and not ideal setups um, for their workspaces throughout the day. So during this webinar, Sarah and I will give you five simple tips for setting up your desk that can reduce or even prevent pain and therefore increase your productivity with work or, or school from home. Um, we will have a special offer for those who attended the webinar and some time for questions either during or at the end. So now over to Sarah for our first tip. Thank you, Sam. So I'm sure that you all have that family member or that friend who feels completely entitled to correct your posture every time you slouch. I know that it's annoying sometimes, but it's always right. So our first tip is sit up. And we are going to show you the most important aspects to consider to set up your chair correctly. Now, the very first thing that you need to know um, when you set up your workstation at home is that you can change or adjust your, your furniture, but you cannot change the length of your legs, your arms, or your body. So at least not yet. Um, so when it comes to setting up the workstation, you have to adapt everything to your body. Unless you have a standing desk, and we have seen in the poll that only 7% of you have one, although we are going to talk a little bit more about this later, you're going to have to work around a desk that wasn't really built for you, but for anyone. 
which means that the fit might not be ideal. In any case, it's important that when you sit down, your shoulders are relaxed, your elbows are at around 90 degrees of flexion, and your forearms are parallel to the floor and resting comfortably on top of the desk or the armrest if you have one. In order to achieve that, we are going to play around with the settings of our chair, just in the image here uh, on the right hand side. So uh, next slide. Um, there are many chair models. Some are very flexible and can be adjusted in multiple planes. Some are more basic and only go up and down. And some of you might not even uh, have a, a chair that can be adjusted in height. So let's go step by step. First thing we are going to do is to move the seat up or down until our forearms sit comfortably on the desk. With our elbows bent are a square angle and our shoulders relaxed as we said before. Once we find that tune, then if we can, we are going to adjust the backrest so our hips are in an open angle. This means that the angle between our trunk and our legs should be greater than 90 degrees. If the chair we have has a seat that tilts, we can play it with uh, we can play with that too in the combination with the backrest. But in any case, it should be horizontal or slightly tilted forward. As a rule of thumb, we should lean back on our chair so the lower back is supported. But we will talk about an alternative later that we think might be interesting. The next thing is the position of the neck. Ideally our ears should be aligned to our shoulders. We are going to achieve this mainly playing with the backrest setting. But later on, we are going to give you some exercises that are going to help too. Um, and finally, our knees should be bent between 90 and 120 degrees, no sitting on our own legs or things like that. And the back of the knees should be about two to three finger widths away from the end of the chair. Now, a few considerations before we move on to the next slide. Um, what if my chair's height can be adjusted? In this case, we will definitely recommend you to invest in a good chair because it pays off. But if that's not an option, you can buy, get by with a regular chair. Just try to find the one that suits you the best, even if not perfect. And then you can use a cushion to raise yourself up a bit. If the chair is too high, then you can try to raise the desk with some books or wedges. What if my chair's backrest can't be adjusted? Well, in this case, the worst case scenario is that you are forced to a square angle, which is not bad. Um, as an alternative, we propose rolling up a towel and placing it as lumbar support. However, you have to think that when you do this, your back muscles are going to fatigue faster. So you shouldn't do this all day long. You need to sort of adjust uh, progressively to this situation. Um, what if I, uh, or what do I do with the unrest? Well, if they are adjustable, uh, as we said before, your elbows should be at least at 90 degrees resting on top of them and level to the desk. If they are not adjustable, um, or if you cannot get close enough to the desk because they're on the way, our recommendation is completely get rid of them. In most of the chairs, they can be disassembled. And lastly, what if my feet, where, what if after doing all these adjustments, my feet don't reach the floor? Well, that's an excellent question. Next slide. Um, if after adjusting the chair, everything else is good, but your feet don't reach the floor, then you need to use a foot rest to reach it. Your legs shouldn't be hanging because that will put too much, uh, too much pressure on the back of your knees. So you don't really need to use a proper foot rest. You can use some books or reams of paper or something similar. Um, but just keep in mind that they only need, uh, whatever you use, only needs to fill the gap between your feet and the floor. If what you use is wider than that, then you're going to be altering the knee angle and that's going to be counterproductive. Other things to keep in mind, as you can see in the, in the slide, is that if possible, um, the backrest should have a slight angle of about 10 or 20 degrees facing us. And uh, it should be obviously as stable and non-slippery as possible. And well, to the next one and um, briefly before we move on to the second tip in case you have a stand index for that seven percent of people that, that do have one um, all the recommendations for the shoulders the neck the elbow and the forearms still apply the only difference is that this time we are going to be standing but everything else should be the same only two brief notes here number one ideally you should stand, stand one quarter of the time that you spend sitting so for example if you are standing up 15 minutes uh, you're going to be uh, sitting for another 45 or so. And number two, 
after a few minutes standing, most of people start getting fatigued and lean on one hip only. To prevent that, we recommend getting a shoe box or a few books or something similar to step onto that with one foot. That way it's easier to keep the hips level and we can swap when we get tired on one side. Good job. So our second tip is to make eye contact. So this tip is all about how to set up our screens. Now, the first step is to set up the center of the screen approximately at shoulder height when you're sitting upright. This means that our eyes should be aligned to the top toolbar of the screen. Most desktops have an adjustable monitor, meaning that the appropriate height can be easily achieved. Otherwise, you can stack your laptop on some books or piles of paper to get the correct height. And obviously, if you choose this method, then you must use a separate keyboard, not use the one that's you know, up on an elevated level. The second step is to keep social distance with the screen. So at the moment, we're all used to social distancing from each other. And in this case, sitting an arm length away from the screen is also correct. So we should just reach the monitor only with our fingertips when we're leaning back on the chair. Finally, if you work with several monitors, there are different ideal arrangements depending on how much you use them. So if we've got a primary monitor that we use mostly and a secondary monitor that we only use a little bit of the time, the primary monitor should be directly in front of us with the secondary monitor off to one side, like the image on the left-hand side of the screen here. If we use both monitors evenly, then we should sit right in the middle of both of them so that they're equal distance from our center point. Okay, so as the screens meet in the middle, that should be directly in front of us so that we're not having to rotate to one side more than the other and that's kept even. Alternatively, um, some people might be working from a desktop and a, a laptop, like on the third image here on the right. If that's the case, use your desktop as your primary screen. So have that one smack bang in the middle and the laptop on the side, but you should elevate it so the screens are of a similar height and you're not having to look down to the side to check your laptop screen. Okay, so next uh, tip, catch that mouse. My, love, like, uh, my wife loves this one. Um, as many of you have guessed, uh, we're going to be talking about keyboard and mouse settings. So the first, set, uh, the first um, setting here is to align the letter B on the keyboard to our nose and to the center of the screen. That's going to, this only applies, applies if the keyboard uh, doesn't have a number pad. If it does, then we should move it slightly to the left to make room for the mouse because the mouse should be as close as possible to the keyboard. Needless to say that if you are left-handed, is the other way around. We should move the keyboard to the right side. Um, next step, adjust the keyboard to your hands and not the other way around. What I mean is the keyboard and mouse should be an extension of your hands. You shouldn't be reaching for them. All the movements should, should come from the elbows and not from the shoulders, especially when it comes to the mouse. And your grip should be as much as possible in a neutral position. Finally, it's a good idea to get a mat or something soft to use as a cushion to rest our wrist on. Okay, so the next tip, the fourth tip, is about the final touches of your workspace. So let's finish strong like Sarah's fellow countrymen. Uh, let me see if I say this right. Triathlete Javier Gomez Noya. There you go. Good. Okay, so for this step, preparation is key. It's a good idea to try and have all the materials and elements that we use regularly within your day within reach so that you don't need to twist or move excessively to grab them. So make sure you prepare. If you use a phone heavily as part of your role, then our recommendation is that you place it on the side of your non-dominant hand. That frees up your dominant hand to type or write notes or use your mouse um, and ensures that we're you know, making the, the most of using the, the, our dominant side. Also, when you're using your phone constantly, it's a good idea to get a headset to avoid awkward neck postures um, or to use your AirPods or something that's disconnected from your screen um, to allow for mobility. Once again, the benefit outweighs the cost by far for this. And finally, if we're reading off other documents, they should be placed in document holders, um, which allow us to use them at the same level as the screen. So you're not repeatedly looking to the side and down. Um, you're keeping your eye level at the same level. OK. 
Okay. Um, okay. So some people need a little bit of a push uh, to stop working and move it a little bit, like the girl in the image, who, by the way, was supposed to uh, fall on the pool, but I don't know what happened with that gift. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we are going to propose less aggressive ideas, such as standing up and get a drink every now and then, um, use a timer to remind you to move, or simply implement doing some brief exercise and stretches every 60 to 90 minutes of consecutive work. In the next few slides, we are going to show you a routine of four simple exercises that uh, you can easily do while sitting on your chair to mobilize and stretch the neck, shoulders and lower back. Um, chin tuck, upper trapezius stretch, scapular retraction and pelvic tilt. These are the three exercises and one stretch to be precise that we propose let us, um, let's, let's see each other, I mean, it's exercise in detail. Okay, so first one. Chin tucks are very good exercises to activate the deep cervical extensors, which stabilize our neck, and in many occasions are overstretched as a result of our posture. This is a really good exercise to come back the forward poking chin that a lot of us get when looking at the screen. Um, to perform them, we are going to sit up straight and try to bring our chin back as if we were gently closing a drawer. When we reach the end of the range of motion, we hold that position for two or three seconds and then relax. That's one repetition. We recommend sets of eight to 12 repetitions for this exercise. Uh, okay, the next one is uh, the stretch for the upper trapezius. Um, we are going to do it preferably standing up. From there, we are going to bring one arm behind our back to lock the shoulder, and we are going to gently stretch the neck to the opposite shoulder using our free hand as in the video. We should feel a nice stretch on the side of the neck, and once we feel it, we are going to hold that for about 30 seconds. We should breathe in and out slowly and comfortably. Um, we recommend to do one or two sets of this stretch per side. The next exercise, is uh, it's called scapular retraction. This one is going to help us a lot with uh, round shoulders and it's going to contribute to keeping a good alignment between the ears and the shoulders, as we said before. Once again, we are going to sit upright or stand tall as if we had a string attached to the top of our head and it was pulling us up. From there, we are going to bring both shoulders back and try to close the gap between the shoulder blades. Make sure when you do it that you don't shrug your shoulders. We are going to hold the position for two or three seconds, and that will be one repetition. Once again, with this one, we recommend to complete between eight or 12 repetitions. And in the video, you can see that the model is only doing one side, but honestly, we recommend to do it with both sides at the same time. Uh, we just think it's better, but obviously you can do it without one if you want to. Um, and the last exercise um, is the pelvic tilt. Pelvic tilts are easier to perform when sitting, although they can be performed standing or laying down too. Um, once more, we are going to sit upright, and this time we are going to try to roll or tilt our pelvis forward and backward, just as the model is doing in the video. This exercise is going to activate the lumbar and abdominal muscles and mobilize the lower back joints. Every time we go back and forth, makes one repetition, once again, to simplify things, between eight and 12 repetitions should be good. Now, um, one set of these four exercises should take you about three minutes or a little bit less to complete and can save you from a lot of trouble. Of course, there are keys and keys are machines that work on the same or similar muscles. Here you have a few examples. Um, some of you might have some or all of these uh, machines in your program and some might not. As you all know, Periodic review sessions with your physiotherapist are the perfect time to discuss changes in your program and include or substitute some exercises. So if any of you are interested in these or other machines, mention them in your next review. Thanks, Sarah. So just to summarize our five tips. Now, number one, sit up. Adjust your chair so that your shoulders are relaxed, your elbows are roughly at 90 degrees and your forearms are resting on your desk or armrests. Number two, make eye contact. Adjust your screen or screens so that they are roughly an arm length away and the top toolbar is aligned with your eyes when you're sitting up straight. Number three, catch that mouse. 
Adjust your keyboard and mouse so that they're an extension of your hands and you don't need to reach for them. Number four, finish strong. Place your phone on your non-dominant side and use a kickstand and external keyboard and mouse for your laptop. And last but not least, number five, move often. Stand up every 60 to 90 minutes at least, the more the merrier, and do some exercises like those we showed you earlier. So based on what we've been discussing today, we put together a checklist that guides you through the process of setting up your workstation. Um, if some of you are interested in it, we will be sending this in an email um, following up from this webinar. Um, so you'll have it in a PDF. We've also put together those four exercises that Seraphin showed you earlier, um, which we'll also be sending you in a follow-up email. Of course, these exercises are generic. So if you wanted something a little bit more tailored, please get in touch with us and we'll be happy to guide you through that. And lastly, for those of you who are watching this webinar, um, we're happy to offer a one half price physio session with either Sarah or myself. Um, to be used in this month of May um, to address any workstation concerns. So this can either be done on via telehealth, um, so we use Zoom for that, or uh, in clinic. Um, if you come in clinic, please bring a photo of you sitting at your desk, try and be as natural as possible in that photo. Um, and we can help you through changing any setup setting issues um, and also treating any niggles if you have any. So the half price offer, as I said, is valid until the end of the month. Thank you all so much uh, for taking the time to tune in. We've really enjoyed presenting this information to you. Um, please feel free to share this with any family members or friends that you think might benefit. Um, and we now have some time for some questions. I think, Carlo, you might have a few for us. Yeah, we've, we've got a really good question here um, from an anonymous uh, center who said their desk doesn't have uh, enough room between the screen for their arms and they don't have any arms on their, on their chair. Do you have any recommendations for how you'd set up um, with a smaller desk? Sorry, sorry, Carlo, is it that they don't have enough room in their home office to set it up? Yeah, to, yeah, exactly. Have enough room and that they're struggling to keep their arms at, at 90 degrees, I believe, is the, is the core of that. Would you recommend getting a new chair or is, um, is that the way? The, the, uh, let me see if I got it right. The problem is that the desktop is uh, too, too narrow and therefore the screen is a little bit too close. Is that so? Exactly, yeah. Um, look, in this case, I think the best solution will actually be to get a new desktop. Not necessarily the full desktop, but sometimes you can get just like a, um, like a, like a piece of a wood board. to put, yeah, exactly, a board to put on top of your existing yeah. desktop. And that can extend that desktop further because you're definitely going to need some real state there to put the, the screen. I've, at least. I've just sent through a follow-up, sorry, Sarah. Yeah. So they're, they're sitting without a, a back, so they're on a, on a bench seat. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, right. So in this <laughs> case, if you don't have a backrest, um, obviously, yeah, the first idea will be maybe invest in a good chair. But if that's not an option, as we said before, you can always try to find ways to keep a good posture. Look, look, I, you know, when I sit here in front of the computer, I use a stool. I don't have a backrest, um, and I know that some people use like feet balls or things like that, which are a good idea. But the problem is, as we mentioned before, that you are going to be using your core and your lumbar muscles a lot more. So you just have to be aware of that. And if we normally recommend to stand up and move a little bit and do some exercises every 60 to 90 minutes. In this case, I will try to do exercises every 30 minutes and stand up and move a little bit because you're going to get fatigued faster. Therefore, you're going to need to do something to break that cycle. Awesome. I think that answers that question really well. Thanks, guys. Um, I've, I've got another one for you. You mentioned um, set up a lot, but do you have any recommendations around lighting or backgrounds um, in your um, homes? Yes. So that's actually a very good question. Um, look, um, we were actually going to uh, touch base on this, but we thought that we didn't have time to, to do so. So yeah, it's perfect. Um, look, if possible, and I know that this might not be achievable for everyone, but if possible, it would be perfect to try to find a place in your house that is isolated 
And so you can have privacy to work and you're not bothering anyone, but at the same time, no one's bothering you when you're working. So that's number one. Number two, lighting, as you said, um, ideally I wouldn't try to put my um, desktop right next to a window because it's going to be too much glare on the screen. So probably it's not the best idea. I think it's best to have the window on your left or right hand side rather than right before, um, rather, rather than just you. in front of you or behind you. Um, and finally, um, do you have any other? Yeah, so I guess as well, if you're going to be on Zoom, a lot of us are doing sort of online meetings at the moment. Um, it's always recommended to try and sit with your back, uh, your back to a like a plain white wall, um, just so there's not too many distractions when you're on your meetings. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it from my part. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned everything else. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And we've got, had another question come in from Rachel Wilson. Um, who said, does a larger screen mean you should be further away? So I guess if you've got a desktop screen and, and it's quite large, um, does that change the distance or in the setup, is, is it really universal that arm length distance you guys talked about just before? Yeah, good question. I would say just the same length away. The, the positioning of the um, sort of the screen is so that you're allowed to, able to keep your elbows bent at 90 degrees and relaxed. You might choose to have it a little bit further away, depending on what feels comfortable for you. Like if it's a huge TV screen, of course, you need that a little bit further away. Um, but otherwise, I would just ensure that you're keeping that right angle at the elbows with your shoulders relaxed. That's the main thing. And you're not having to reach too far forwards for the keyboard. Hopefully, m most of us have sort of separate keyboards so you can set that up a bit, uh, you know, comfortably to you. But was there anything you wanted to add? Um, yeah. So. Look, if you have a bigger screen, um, it's probably because you need some more real estate to, you know, you have several applications open at, at the same time or something like that. And then you're going to be playing up with the resolution of the screen. So when we say that the screen should be about arm length away, that's, as Carlos said, it's universal. Doesn't need to be exactly arm length away. That's sort of like a rule of thumb. Um, of course, you need to find within that range, you have to find the exact distance that is good for you. But um, I reckon that if you have a bigger screen, your resolution is going to be smaller. Therefore, things in the, in the um, screen are going to look the same um, you know, size, no, size that um. someone with a smaller screen. So um, in that regard, I think that one arm length away is perfect for whatever screen you're using. Obviously, you're not going to be using a 50 uh, inches big screen if you are just working. So, um, yeah, I, I reckon that arm length away is perfect. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And um, I've, I've got another question here around um, style of chairs. Um, any recommendations on with, arm, with armrests or not with armrests, armrests or any height of that? Or is it, is it really a, a whatever custom fit and whatever you feel comfortable in? Uh, Look, if, if you if you get to choose whether armrest or not armrest, yes, definitely armrest. The only issue is that sometimes armrest and the and the height of your desk is not compatible, depending on your body size, basically. So um, if if you have a problem and it's either armrest or getting close enough to the desktop, then get close enough to the desktop and get rid of those armrests. If you can choose both, then even better. Awesome. Thanks for that, guys. I think that's, that's our time perfectly done. So um, if anyone does have any other questions, um, you can send them to the emails up on the screen um, or has it, wants to follow up with any appointments. We'll also send out a follow-up email to everyone attending today with, um, with the, a link to this video so you can re-watch it. And we'll also have some additional content on there. Um, but thanks so much for joining us, guys. I'm sorry your video wasn't working and we couldn't get you on, on screen, but it's been really, really good to have you and hopefully um, everyone took something out of today. So thanks again. Thanks, Carlo. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye.